Well, I had two uh, special teachers. I had uh, Kay Clark, who was my English teacher, and Martha McHenry Wilson was my Spanish teacher. Um, I took refuge uh, in those two classes with those two ladies. And those two ladies were very instrumental in helping me balance myself uh, as far as attitude, aggression, uh, all of that uh, while I was at school. Um, there was not always good times uh, dealing with the administration, but when I got to those two classes that I made A's and B's in, <laughs> those two ladies really were uh, instrumental in helping me uh, you know, maintain my self-esteem, uh, feel good about myself, feel good about school. So that's two good experiences. Well, my path took me after graduation to the military. I went into the United States Marine Corps uh, immediately after graduation, and it was the best thing that I could have ever done uh, in my life. Uh, everything that I'm about, uh, everything that uh, I've uh, been able to lead into is all related to my service. Um, I had an excellent uh, time in the six years I was in the Marine Corps, uh, and I'll never regret it. Oh my, uh, knowing what I know now, I would have uh, really concentrated and not let the peripheral issues in life uh, catch me off and cause me to get caught up. I would uh, study the eyeball and be either an optometrist or an ophthalmologist. Uh, I love the eyeball and I just didn't have you know, the stick to the concentration on uh, choosing that over dealing with the issues in life. Uh, I got a friend that we were together uh, from ninth grade, and we really competed with learning about the eye, and he went on to be an uh, ophthalmologist, uh, and I didn't. So that's one of the things that I'd change if I could. He loved God, he loved his country, and he loved his city, and he loved his family. <coughs> Set your priorities, Dad. <laughs> um, I'll ask one more question, and then uh, we can wrap it up. All right. Um, is there a personal accomplishment you'd like to share? Yes. When I got out of the Marine Corps in 1975, I didn't have much money. But my father told me uh, just before he passed away, son, we ought to buy the donut shop next door and turn it into a restaurant. Uh, if you do that, you'll be able to take care of everybody uh, when I'm gone. It hurt me to tell my father that I didn't have any money enough to purchase this building, and I couldn't do it. So once I did tell him, he said, well, listen, if you ever get the money to create a restaurant, do it, because I see that as being a way for you to take care of the whole family. Well, in 2006, after a career uh, in management at General Motors, uh, I had enough money. And I built that restaurant right across the street from our house, our homestead, our, where I was raised up. And it sits there today, the pit barbecue. And I have one in Indianapolis also. So a, 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 a young man, a family of 12, who didn't realize that he was poor, didn't experience uh, a whole lot of issues uh, with who he was uh, has been able to give more than a half million in charity in this community through his businesses. So, uh, you know, I do it very quietly. I don't publicize it uh, unless I'm telling the people who I'm giving free meals to, uh, come and get them or I'll take them to you. Uh, 
Um, I think that's a great sense of accomplishment.